wine bottle right in the middle of everything, huh? Oh yeah. Well, there's a little background story behind this. So uh <laughs> Okay. When you when you guys went on those AFC championship runs back in uh 2009, 2010, I uh right. I got this bottle as a gift with my cousin. He's the reason I became a Jets fan. We got two of them. They're limited edition Jets bottles of wine, Jets uncorked. And uh we said we're gonna open his when we get to the Super Bowl, and then we're gonna open mine when we win it. And the rule was if it, we don't open either of the bottles or if we don't open a bottle, we get buried in the grave with it. So that's that's the reason behind that one right there. <laughs> okay. I hope you I hope you don't have to take it with you. No. Yeah. That this year hey, we this we, year. we haven't been close since those runs. So it's you know no, the, no, I haven't it's been, pretty good. It's, it's getting a little bit closer though. They look like they're uh, they're a better football team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then we got the uh, Joe name and sign mini helmet next to it. So uh, uh, you might not be able to see it in the camera, but I, I can see it. I can see it. Nice, nice. All right, well, uh, let's begin. I appreciate you joining. Um, sure. For the viewers, we got Coach Mike Westoff. Absolutely illustrious career, 30 years in the NFL, uh, most notably with the Dolphins, the Jets, in a great year, a uh, year or two in, in New Orleans. Uh, widely considered to be amongst the greatest. Me and Evan think the greatest special teams coach in NFL history. Uh, Evan and I are Knicks and Jets fans. We're no stranger to revolving doors in the coaching staff, but it was always a pleasure to know Mike's seat was his through throughout all the coaching staff. Um, so it was a, definitely a pleasure having that. But overall of the uh, NFL success, uh, I believe his, his biggest accomplishment was battling through uh, heavy adversity off the field. Um, battling with cancer along with the various surgeries and rehabilitation um, just reading up on it it was inspirational but got Mike on how are we doing Mike I'm doing great thank you I mean I'm you know we're uh, a pretty tough time down here you know I live in Fort Myers and uh, you know we got hit with a hurricane and we were right in yep. the eye um, mm -hmm. I got banged around a little bit I I, I was I, I, I stayed home and fought it uh, let's see I lost both of my cars uh, my pool cage was destroyed. I got some water in my home. In fact, we're kind of uh, not too bad, but we're putting that back together. But I got, uh, I didn't get it as bad as some, but I, I got smacked a little bit too. So this was a, this was a tough one. This was a tough one. I appreciate you coming on and you're, you're a no, fighter. No, no, no. Happy to do it. So <laughs> good break so cool. from the stuff I've been doing. Trust me. Believe yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, so I have a, I have a question to start us off. Sure. Um, so my, my first question your favorite Jets coach you've ever been under? You've been through Herm Edwards, Man Genius, and Rex Ryan. So my my question is, which of those were your favorite to coach under, and why is it Rex Ryan? <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Yeah, that, that's easy. Rex was uh, – I enjoyed I enjoyed being with Rex. I enjoyed it. It was fun. You know, Rex did a, a lot of things that were really enjoyable. You know, some of his craziness, believe me, some of the things that he did – um, he, he's pretty smart. He knew what he was doing. You know, he was taking a little pressure off the team and he'd do some things, but none of that craziness was ever manifested in our football team. I mean, we had, a, we had a good group. We had good guys. I mean, they, they showed up on time. They worked hard. They practiced hard, you know, everything you'd expect from a good team. So Rex was, uh, it was enjoyable to be with him. I had a lot of fun with him. I, I liked it. It's a shame that after we got to those championship games, you know, then the lockout occurred. And, you know, we lost right. what we what we lose 14 guys or something like that. And, uh, you know, we went on the the, the, the Mike Tannenbaum pros, prosperity uh, uh, treatment. And, that right. and so um, but it was good. And working with Rex was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. We were good. I, I liked his ability to communicate with the guys. He was great to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, good experience. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. You guys were like the center of the media. We loved it. Just watching Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks was the best, man. Yeah, you guys are. But um, so go, going off that that tenure, then what? Who was your? Who would you say is your favorite Jets player that you ever coached uh, in your time with either any regime there? Just in your in your entire 11, 12 year oh, tenure. Oh man, the Jets? that's a tough one because they're all so different. Yeah, they're all so different. You know, because you got to look at you know all the different ways that you you look at that. I mean, when I first got there, it'd be pretty easy, I'd have to say probably Chris Hayes, you know, who, who, who just was great for me and was a real pro. You know, I like that. that then, then you come along with a guy at a position, you get James Dirth as a long snapper, mm. what he did. And he was such a gentleman and he was so tough. I mean, he was a big, strong guy. So, you know, and then, of course, then, then you move into different roles. You know, you've got a linebacker that plays different roles and you'd have to be Kenyatta Wright. And he should, he should, he was a pro bowl type player. He was really yeah. good. And then, of course, the return guys, I had an army. 
And if I had to pick someone, it has to be has to be Leon. You know, yeah, Leon, that's you know, that's, that's my that's my favorite guy right there. I got his yeah, jersey. He was he was special. And you know, the things that we did were so much fun. But I had the, it, it was it was absolutely some of the best years, not only in my coaching career, but of my life. I very yeah. much love New York. I, I love I like living there. I like the people. I used to love to go into the city. I love the Jets fans. You know, I love coming out in the stadium. The fans were great. And we and we were good. And we were a good team. You know, and mm. they get excited. And here we're knocking on the door. I mean, come on. It was just an incredible time. And um, though to pick, you know, it's hard to just pick any one person because there were there were yeah. so many that were so special to me at that time. Just a, a bunch of them. And it was uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved I got a, I got a sleeper for you. Brad Smith. I mean, Oh, he was yeah. one of our favorites. Yeah, Brad, uh, Eric especially. Smith. Eric oh, Smith. Eric Smith. Yeah, yeah. Brad, Brad, I went out to Missouri and worked them out. Um, it was like everyone in Missouri w- was wearing black armbands. I mean, they were, they, 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 they loved Brad. They were devastated. His secretaries were crying. Yeah. You know, they didn't want yeah. to lose him. And then, you know, we brought him in. Um, I worked him out as a, as a receiver and a return guy. And I was right. That, that was yep. the right thing. <laughs> and he, he did exceptionally well with that. You know, he was a good player, a good man, and uh, a guy that could do everything. He could do everything. And he did everything oh, yeah. well. And so I, I hated to lose him. Yeah, I just hated to lose him. But, right. you know, we were in that situation. You know, we just, we, 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 didn't, we didn't manage that very well. And we lost mm. some really good guys. Yeah. I got another throwback for you. Uh, you're a Pittsburgh guy, so uh, you definitely remember this. 04 playoffs. Uh, kicker Doug Bryan, game winner versus San Diego, but then follow up in Pittsburgh, misses two kicks under two minutes. Uh, Pittsburgh ends up going on to win the Super Bowl that year. If we had Nick Falk, we win in the Super Bowl that year. Oh, sure, absolutely. The thing was, though, it wasn't just you don't want to blame that on. If you read my book, read the book I described that in in, in great detail. Absolutely, that was the worst. That was the worst managed part of the game and, and clock management and play calling in the history of football. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we should have won the game. The thing mm. was, you know, remember it was a, it was a cold, damp, crummy day. That stadium field had the lowest field goal percentage in NFL history. Okay. That that's what the, you want to make. You want to miss a field goal, go to Pittsburgh. Everybody yeah. else missed them though. You know, Doug tries one that was about as far as he could kick it. And he hit the crossbar. Well, then we come back, you know, we intercepted a pass. It was David Barrett intercepted a pass. And you know, we're, we're, I, I kept telling, um, I told Herman, I said, look, you've got to get the ball to the 20 yard line or get it inside. You know, we're yeah. on the 26 or something. And we, we, we just, we, we start taking a knee and dropping. I, we lose yards. I was freaking out. And, and of course he missed it. And he tried to muscle it. And it was really just a kick that, that, that would have been, if it had been a reasonable kick, he would have made it but that kick was tough for him and he wasn't quite good enough to do it. And, uh, but yet that was, you know, we had, we had run a punt return. Santana Moss ran a punt return for a touchdown that game. We had played yeah. exceptionally well. And that's a game we should have won, but that was the game, you know, and we have Curtis Martin's our running back and we're losing yards. And I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to throw up. I mean, that's yeah. like, you can't do that. And so yeah. we, we mismanaged the end of that game and uh, put him in a very precarious position. And that's a kick that a lot of guys would miss. And, uh, and he, and he missed it, but it was, yeah, it was it his fault. Sure. But, uh, he had lots of help. Believe me, he right. had lots of help in screwing the end of that game up. Lots. Yeah. Of I didn't know that. That was one of the first memories I had watching with my father. Um, you know, just kind of strength. I remember on the edge of the seat for the San Diego game and it went in, uh, and then I was devastated with the Pittsburgh game, but uh, yeah, that was a few... tough one. We, we should have yeah. won that game. Yeah, absolutely. You got, uh, yeah, so one more throwback question here for you, Mike, before we get <laughs> okay. into modern-day Jets. Uh, sure. What's your favorite story from your entire tenure with the Jets, whether it's on the field or in the locker room? What's, what's the, your favorite story that you could tell Jets oh, fans? Oh, my gosh. Okay, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick tour. You, you, got, you guys got to get my book and read it now. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I will plug that in. We'll, we'll get, get that it, in. <laughs> get it anywhere. Figure it out. You're going to love it. But there was a story with Rex, a, a kind of a funny thing that took place on Thanksgiving Day. I'll tell to you guys, uh, people have read it will know. Um, We had been, we we had had some penalties on offense and Brian Schottenheimer was kind of raising a little bit of hell. And he told the offense that if they got penalties in practice, he was going to make them run a lap. Okay. Which I'm okay with, but not during practice. 
you know, keep them and don't, don't, you know, you're, you're practicing your offense. You guys run a lap. I mean, I don't get that. I would have never done that. But anyway, so um, Wayne Hunter, who was a great big tough guy, um, maybe, maybe one of the toughest football players to ever play in National Football League. Believe me, wow. if you had to pick somebody, you don't want to fight, pick him. You don't want to fight him. Hey. And uh, so he gets a penalty and he starts going. And Justin Miller, remember Justin, a return guy? Hey, we got a picture of him up there. Oh, yeah. Right. Just, Justin was a good player. Well, Justin started teasing him and Wayne didn't like it too much. He told him to shut up. Anyway, a few plays later, he gets another penalty. Now he starts running. So Justin, you know, being a wise guy, says something again. Now Wayne goes after him. Now, fortunately for Justin, there were enough guys. Everybody got it broken up and it was over. Hey. It couldn't have been five minutes later. Same thing happens. Now, Justin said something. Wayne stopped everybody. He just stopped. He walked and he stopped. And he said, let me tell you something. I, I won't use his language. <laughs> he said, when this practice is over, I'll get you in the locker room. I'm going to beat the hell out of you. And he said, <laughs> he said, and nobody out here can stop me. He said, nobody can stop me. So Rex is standing next to me. I said, I said, you, you got to do something. Cause Wayne Hunter, he, he would, he would have done this. I mean, he, he would, it would have been over. Right. Yeah. So Wayne called Justin Miller or Rex called Justin over. And he said, all right, now look, go in the locker room. Don't take your uniform off, grab your car keys and go to hell home right now <laughs> right now i said we are not going to have this happen so there i'm looking on thanksgiving morning and there goes justin miller driving out of the parking lot in his <laughs> uniform <laughs> and everybody knew that was the smart thing to do <laughs> that is all awesome. that was one of the craziest ones if i That's had to awesome. pick a game one it's hard not to pick the the 2002 game up in buffalo where you know where chad morton uh, ran the two touchdowns for kickoff return yeah, so that's probably the best special teams game ever played in history. But yeah. if I have to pick one play, it'll be the 10 year celebration of 9 11 or of commemorance, commemoration of 9 11. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And uh, President Bush was there. It was an incredible game. And, and we I was at that game. Punt. We blocked the punt to win the game. Yeah, that, that was, was epic. I was, I was at that Joe, Joe McKnight, rest we in peace. I, I, was, I was there with my dad. That was crazy. And that was, a, that was an unbelievable game. Yeah. An incredible game. You know, we had just come off the championship and we were good. And, and Dallas is good. You know, and we beat them. We intercepted Tony Romo and then we blocked the punt and, and Nick Folk kicks a field goal. And, uh, but I had drawn that punt block up six years ago. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah, that was, that was the last time the Jets had been on Sunday night football. That game. Yep. Was it really? Yeah. I didn't yep. know that. And yep. uh, Jody Camellis, who was there, who had been at Jacksonville and I had gone and spent some time with him. And he had come up with an unbalanced punt type formation. And he, he asked me about it. And I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. And he said, how about trying to beat it? And I drew a bunch. I drew up this many papers. And I said, I think it's pretty good. But I said, this kind of block scares me because I'm going to shift two people and da 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 yeah. He said, I, I think I can handle that. I used that exact same block and blocked the punt. Wow. So that's that's pretty cool for me. And I that's love awesome. Joe. He's one of my best friends. And I, I, there's a lot of coaches I'd be happy to do it to. I was not happy to do it to him, but uh, that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. that's great. Uh, so, so we want to get to a little current, current Jets. Uh, we sure. always talk about how uh, the the current team right now reminds us a lot of the 2010, 2011. Well, the yeah, second, the second year with the second year quarterback, you know, second year or head coach, um, you know, like a rah rah energetic guy as a head coach. Uh, really good defense, good special teams. Do you see any similarities between the two? And and sure. if you do, what are your thoughts on? Oh, on the you, you you did you did a good job of naming some of them. You yeah. did a good yeah. job. That's exactly correct. Um, when I went to training camp this year, I visited with the the head coach who I did not know, but I liked them. I was impressed, and I was impressed with their practice. I thought it was a good practice. I mean, it was, it's what you, in my opinion, it was kind of what at that stage. And again, it's the beginning of training camp. But it's, it's what you're looking for in an NFL practice. I saw, I saw all of those things being tried. They're not all, they weren't all solved, but they were being tried to done, be done the right way. And I was very impressed with that. So I like yeah. that. I think um, the personnel is the best overall personnel I've seen there in at least 10 years. Oh, yeah. 10. They got some good, young, explosive guys. The defense is good. They're very solid. I think the two the two defensive tackles are outstanding. They dominate oh, yeah. the game inside. They're really they're really a force. And so you know you've got some good pieces, and then you've got you've got the quarterback. You know, and, and you you see this. He, he reminds me of the stock market sometimes. You know, yeah. Um, 
but it's a little bit, a little bit like Mark Sanchez. Mm. And, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to compare one to the other. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not demeaning anybody. I don't mean it that way at all, but in a similar role where they have not quite established them themselves as the overall quarterback leader that you want. And, and I don't think this guy has done that either. I don't believe Wilson's done that. I don't. And Mark right. had not done it, but don't forget, you know, Mark was part of a team that led the league in rushing. Hmm. Oh, come on. We had LaDamian Thomason and Alan Fanica and Nick Mangle and the brick. I mean, we were pretty Sean good. Green, yep. Yeah, it was pretty good. Oh pretty yeah. Good players. So in some ways there's some similarities that that's all, that's all I'm referring to. But what I want to see is him develop as a young guy and the coordinator develop as a second year play caller. I think yeah. the, the last week, last week, I think was probably the most solid move forward in that area that I saw a couple of weeks ago against New England, I, I, I was discouraged. I, oh, thought yeah. he, I, I thought he looked terrible. I didn't yeah. like the play. I didn't like some of the plays. I, I just didn't think they were getting him out of the pocket. You know, he a couple of those throws, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. But I saw some positive move from, movement, movement forward. And so that, that gives you some hope. I still think there's a big question mark there with him. I really believe that, but I saw some good things. And if you can keep moving forward, look out because this football team, I'll tell you this back before the season started, I predicted that at, at this point in time, I thought they'd be around 500. I believe that they're way better than I thought they'd be. I mean, right. I, I, would have, I would have bet my boat. They couldn't be Buffalo. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so no, no disrespect. Buffalo's good. Yeah. Really good. They're, they're yeah. good football. I thought they're the best team in the league. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they're pretty good. And anyway, but but the Jets have, I thought if they can do that, they've got a legitimate run for the playoffs. Now, I firmly believe that. Now, I think they should get in the playoffs. How far they can go, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know one thing. When you've got a good defense and your special teams are solid, it, it, it's that whole that whole process has been watered down. You just don't get as many plays. The idea is of the two or three plays you're going to have, win them. Be solid. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to you're not going to get what I got. What I used to get. You know, I used to get a million chances. That's why we were so damn good. Um, you know, that's that's different today. But when you're solid there, which I think they they are, and your offense can be productive, they can run the ball, and, and these guys can run the ball a little bit. Absolutely. They can run the football, and so when you can do that. There's a lot of teams you can beat, and, and that's how they beat Buffalo. If you can beat Buffalo, you can beat anybody. So yeah. I think the Jets, I mean, I said this back in training camp, that if I were a Jets fan, I would be very excited. I, I, I'm going to stick with that. My my bar is still pretty high. You know, I don't expect them to, uh, I think they got to keep going. Yeah, you know, they're gonna, we're, they're gonna we're, we're fucking back, Mike. We're back. <laughs> that's it. That, that's it. We're, we're fucking back. Um, we... Uh, Huge, huge special teams plays as one of those games this year. Onside couple kick, couple, couple of big, help. big, faint, fake, fake, punts. fake, the fake punt a couple of weeks ago. Yep, yep, and then a fake throw in the uh, in the Browns game. We had a fake punt. Guy threw the ball for a first down. Yeah. Um. So obviously, Brant Boyer is doing an incredible job. But we're giving you this podcast um, to admit that you're in his ear during the game. No, uh, there's a microphone no. in his ear direct to yeah. you. You're no, helping no. him. I, out you know, I, I do. Know, I drafted him. You know. Yeah, I know that. Well, yeah, I, drafted. I read that. It was my yep. pick. Yeah, it was, you know, he played <laughs> at the University of Arizona. I went down there to Tucson, worked him out, and I liked him. He played for me. He did a good job. And then when Jimmy Johnson came in, you know, Jimmy kind of moved on with him, and, and he ended up a nice career. But um, no, no, I'm not in his ear. He, but he does a good job. Brent, Brent's a, a good coach, and he's doing a nice job. So I'm, I'm very happy for him. Yeah, absolutely. He, it's been big, <laughs> huge. Um, yeah, but got, as we wind down here, we only have a few minutes left. Um, you know, we appreciate you coming on, but tell us about the book because I know you, you mentioned it, you referenced it a couple of times. It's something that yeah. we're interested in, in getting our hands on and, and we want to give our listeners a chance to go out there and, and get the book. So, so give us, please, give us a little background on it. What, what inspired you to do it? Like what, 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 it's, where, it's a story. Where I always, I always wanted to write a book. Um, I thought, and I had the perfect opportunity during the pandemic. I spent two years, so I wrote every day. Yep. I wrote every word myself. I had a guy help me do the interviews. I like the fact that you're going to hear me tell the story and then you hear Leon Washington tell it. So I think that's a good way to write a book. Um, it's all true. It's all exactly the way it happened. It's not just an X and O book by any means. It covers a lot of aspects of any of life 
and, and just figure it out, which is what we all have to try to do. And um, I'm very proud of it. And I love the fact the players contributed and they got involved and they loved doing it because when I got involved in special teams, it was kind of a non-entity. You know, it wasn't really anything. It just was a play. Well, then, you know, I got in by accident. I didn't know. I was a tight ends coach, offensive line. What the hell did I know? And all of a sudden, here I am doing it. Well, one thing I learned in a hurry, that there was very little innovation. And there was zero regulation. You could do mm -hmm. anything. So right. I did everything. I tried it all. You know, some of it became illegal. And there's things that they took out and you can't do. But it contributed to wins everywhere that I was. It contributed down in... And when I went to New Orleans, I don't, I didn't want to go to the saints. I was doing my television show. I was enjoying it. I got a call. I don't know Sean Payton. I never met him. And he said, look, we're, we're a really good team. He said, but our special teams are, they're just not good. We need help. It's the middle of the season. I said, okay. So I show, I don't know one player. I never met a player on the team. And, and, uh, so I started when I walked in there, they were ranked 31st in the league. When I left, we were first. So I helped and right. I had a ball. I loved it. And so I know that I was able to, what I did helped win games. Did it win games? Oh, no, not, not, not really. No. Did it lose games? Yeah. I, I believe that I could lose them. I never really felt that I won them, but I felt that I helped win a hell of a lot of them. I believe in those years I was at the New York jets and we were in the playoffs about 60% of the time. Yeah. We'd have never gone to the playoffs if we didn't do what we did in the kicking game because mm. we made a lot of big plays that helped us win games. And, and our defense was scoring, you know, giving up 17 points, you know, a touchdown in that kind of game is that's is right. Ginormous. That's hundred percent correct. That's the way it went. So for me, I wanted to tell that story because I helped take it to a point of prominence where it had never been and it'll never go again, guys. It's just different. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean yeah. it's better or worse. It's just different. And I don't, I believe it's worse, but that's just me. I, I obviously <laughs> could have what I could have my involvement, but, um, I'm happy I wrote the book, figure it out. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it uh, um, anywhere. You, you, you're pretty much anywhere you want, want to get it. Mascot Books is the publisher. You can go into Mascot Books and they'll, they'll send it right to your house. And um, I'm proud of it. I think it's a good story. I've gotten great reviews. But when you're small like I am, you know, I'm not James Patterson or some famous writer. You know, it's hard to get the number out. So, you know, it's always a, it's a work in progress. But we sold a lot. I've got... Uh, 80 some percent five-star rating. So I'm very proud of it. And I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll very much enjoy it. Listen, Mike, you are uh, one of our favorite coaches. We're no doubt getting the book. We have a ton of diehards that listen to this podcast. So uh, okay. they'd be happy to see you got a, you got a book yeah. out there that you can it's get. A great Christmas uh, gift. They'll enjoy it. Thank you for absolutely. that. Thanks for asking about it. We got uh, we got one more question. One final sure. question. Sure. Elijah Moore wouldn't be allowed to do what he's doing in your locker room, huh? <laughs> you've been following up with him or no no i don't know all that i know a little bit but i'm not totally versed yeah this is uh he's he's been uh he's been complaining about touches and uh has, has been nowhere to be found in the in the in the in the offense yeah i i, I fail to believe that rex ryan would let him uh let him be no, uh, doing it's all doing, different but... you know I'm, i don't like to be critical of what someone's doing or what someone's not doing i was involved in good programs i mean i right. remember i was at don shula for 100 years you know, he did things pretty well <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then yeah, he went yeah. on. Then I was at Miami. I was at, excuse me, at, at New York that I loved. And then New Orleans, well, we were really good. I mean, we were really good. You got Drew Brees and Sean Payton. I mean, come on. So yeah. you know, I've been involved in very good football teams with very unselfish people. And uh, I have no patience for anyone that's not. And I'm, I'm pretty tough to deal with. I can yeah, yeah. to deal with. But I love, I respect and really like the guys. But I don't put up with anything. They'd have to, you know, they'd, they could probably beat me up now. I'm getting old. But <laughs> back in the day, I, I didn't care. I was, I loved it. So I was, I, I don't, I, I, I hold it at a certain level. That's mm. where I am. And that's where you better be. And if you're not, then get the hell out. Right. I, I completely agree. Well, I appreciate, appreciate you joining. This has uh, been an awesome experience for both, for both of us. Uh, and be safe over there with that hurricane. Make sure everything's yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 slowly putting back together. So thank you for for asking. We'll come over. We'll come fly out and, and move or fix anything out there you need. We'll come out. <laughs> move the cars out. Whatever you need us to do. We got blue collar Jets down, fans. You, you come down this way out when it, when it gets nice. I'll take you fishing. Oh yeah, uh, nice. Awesome. Appreciate it, Mike. <laughs> I got a boat. You come down or you call me. I'll take you. Oh yeah, we'll absolutely. We I, we're, we might take you up on that offer. <laughs> you should do it. You'll have a ball. I only you know I only fish for sharks. There we go. I, I don't catch. I've been scared of sharks. I, I, don't, I, don't, sharks. I don't kill them. I don't kill them, but I catch them. Oh, nice. I catch them. 
You got to get Evan's scared of shards, so you got to yeah. get his fear out of read there. Read my book. Read my book. You'll see. Okay. We will. Appreciate thanks, it, Mike. guys. All right. Thank you. Have a, have a good uh, weekend. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Bye. See ya. Let's deal one today. Oh, welcome back.